All right, so I've had my Tesla Model Y for over four years now, and at the time that I bought it, I did not get the full self-driving package. I just got the beta auto steer, which is built into every single Tesla. And that's because in Canada, to add that feature, it was literally 12,000 additional dollars. And I was like, you know what? I can just drive myself. But recently, Tesla and Elon Musk, obviously, have given everyone one month free of full self-driving. So everything is unlocked, including parking, summon, all the turns, stopping at red lights, literally everything that's involved in full self-driving. And that's because Tesla is rolling out their subscription model in 2024, meaning that you can unlock full self-driving without paying that crazy 12k fee i'm not sure what it is in the us but in canada it's around 12k or at least it was at the time that i got my car and instead you can pay a hundred dollars a month and sort of just pay month by month to get that feature and you can stop paying at any point so in this video we're gonna see specifically for the tesla model y but obviously this video applies to every single tesla is the full self-driving worth buying in 2024 all right so now we're out for a drive and the way to activate full self-driving is the exact same as auto steer you simply push down on the gear indicator once and then the car will take over now there are two major differences between full self-driving and the auto steer first off you have the ui so it looks completely different and actually tesla has this new update where it takes over the entire screen which I think is pretty dope. And you also get this blue leading line, which sort of tells you where the car is going. You don't get this with auto steer. Now auto steer just keeps you in your lane and it adjusts for the speed around you based on the vehicles in front of you and behind you. So one of the biggest differences with full self driving is that not only does it make turns on its own, so it can go right automatically and it can also go left at a light, but it also stops at stop signs as well as lights. And that's something you don't get with auto steer. On auto steer, the car in theory will run through every single light and will go through every single stop sign and it's not gonna stop. So most people just use it on the highway. So this is really convenient if you need to drink something for whatever reason, or maybe you're having a coffee or maybe you're having a snack and you just need the car to drive itself. So you're gonna notice right now that we're at a four way intersection. So it actually stopped at the stop sign and now it's looking around, making sure it's safe to go, and then it crosses it, it crosses the road. And again, you'll notice I haven't touched my steering wheel. Now, something cool to note here is that there's a bunch of cars parked to the right side, and you'll also see that there's no lines on the road or anything here, and the car is able to recognize that, hey, all these cars are parked to the side, and I've gotta drive around them. So that's a really convenient factor of full self-driving. But the question becomes, is this alone enough for you to pay $12,000 to permanently unlock all these features or go with Tesla's new subscription model where you can pay $100 a month to unlock it? In my opinion, it's not. And I think that there is one other feature that I use on the full self-driving, which is, I think, the real way to use full self-driving, which really unlocks the full potential of this car. All right, so real quick, I wanna talk about this week's sponsor, and it's my friends over at MacBag, and they make these amazing rim cases for Tesla rims, and literally it doesn't matter what model you have. Now, most Tesla owners, almost every single Tesla you see in every single parking lot has some scuffs on the rims. And the reason for this is that this is probably the only car where the rim sticks out further than the tire. And especially if you've gotten the upgraded rims, it's really painful to hear that screeching sound every time you accidentally hit a curb. And it does happen to most people. You just don't have that buffer of the tire being further out than the rim. And that's why a lot of Teslas and most Tesla owners go through this pain of scratching up their rims. So MacBag has a really clever solution. It's called a rim case. And I'm gonna show you in a couple of seconds right now, but basically it is a casing that goes around the rim and on top and it just clips on. It's really easy to install. You don't need any kind of tools or anything like that. And it literally protects your entire rim. So next time, instead of hitting your rim, you actually just end up hitting the actual protective case that MacBag has on top of the rim and it keeps it super secure, which is just awesome. Let me just grab the one that I have open so I can show you what it looks like. So these are the pieces that you get inside the box. They're super easy to install. You don't need any tools or anything like that. And they go right on top of the rim. There are some additional steps that you need to take in order to install this properly, such as cleaning the rim and there are some protective fillers. But yeah, this is gonna be super clutch for a ton of people. So if you guys are interested in this, you will see the before and after in the B-roll in this video. But I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to check out. A huge shout out to MacPack for sponsoring this week's video. 
Now, let's get back to the full self-driving. Okay, so now getting back into the video, and I think this is the best way to use full self-driving and really use it to its full capabilities. Now, what you can do is that if you go into Navigate and you type in um, a destination, so I'll just type in Walmart and it'll bring me to a Walmart that's nearby. Now, it's really close. You'll see that it's only a four minute drive from where I am right now. But if I go ahead and I start this route, so obviously the navigation will guide me as to how to get there now. But if I put the car into drive and then I simply start driving, so I'm gonna get onto the road right here. I'm gonna turn left. Okay, awesome, so now we're on the road. And now again, if I activate full self-driving, now I can actually just sit back and the car will take me to my destination, which I think is super cool. So this is a real hands-off experience. Now, you're gonna notice that obviously this uh, volume is going to be in the background, but the car is actually gonna turn on its own. It knows the directions for everything. Now, the only annoying thing with Tesla's full self-driving is that it is a feature that you sort of have to monitor. So it's not completely hands-off. So every now and then the car will nudge you and tell you to, hey, are you still there? Can you touch the steering wheel? Make sure that you're still there. Now, this is where I wish Tesla would actually take a cue from Cadillac and just use the internal camera in the car to look at you and make sure the driver's still there. That's what Cadillac does and Cadillac has a real hands-free experience. So you're gonna notice that the car made that last turn on its own and the light actually just turned red. So it did break a little bit late, but it did break on its own and here it's telling me to apply some force. So now the car is gonna sit here at this intersection until it takes me all the way to this nearby Walmart. And I think this is the craziest part of full self-driving. It'll literally take you anywhere you want simply by just putting in a destination into the navigation. Now, personally, I'm a millennial, so I didn't grow up with any of this technology or this kind of stuff. So for me, I think it's so freaking cool that a car can just drive itself and literally take you to wherever you want to go. This is something kind of like from the future for me. And I think it's so awesome. So we're going to continue with this drive and see how the car does, even though we're only just three minutes away and waiting at this red light. It's a pretty simple command because it just had to make a couple of turns. But once we get there, we're actually going to check out another feature of full self-driving, which will really help out those of you that struggle with parking in public spaces. All right, cool. So now we've gone to this Walmart fully thanks to full self-driving, which I think is pretty cool. And now we've arrived at the parking stage of driving, which is obviously the last thing you do before you get out of your car at your destination. Now, a lot of people do struggle with parking in public spaces and that's totally okay. And this full self-driving uh, feature comes with a self-parking ability, which I think is really cool. So if we take a look at the screen right now, the car is in drive, but I've completely stopped and this guy's just cutting across the parking lot. Um, but you'll notice that there's all these parking spots available. Now, if I tap on any of these, the car will sort of start its full self-driving parking function. Now, just as a bit of a warning, it does take a little bit long to do the reverse parking. I found that parallel parking is the quickest, but if I go ahead and I hit this P, it asks me if I'm ready, and then I go ahead and I hit start. And now if you take a look at the steering wheel, like I am completely hands-free, I'm not touching at all. The car is turning the steering wheel completely on its own and it's going into the self park feature, which again, I think is, I think it's pretty dope. It's really good for those of you that struggle with parking in public spaces. And yes, obviously it does work if there are other vehicles around. This is just the parking lot that I drove to and it just so happened to be pretty empty. So I figured I'd just show you this example right here. And there you go. That was pretty quick, a perfect parking. All right, cool. So just for example sake, I figured that I'd show you how it works parking between two cars as well, because that was a pretty simple example. So now we're parked or we're across two cars with one parking spot in the middle. So if I go ahead and I tab that spot, same thing is gonna ask if I'm ready to park. So if I go ahead and I hit start, so now there's two vehicles on each side. And again, you'll notice I'm completely hands-free. The car is doing everything on its own. Steering wheel is turning on its own. And now it should just reverse right into the spot. And you'll notice that the strategy it took was different when there was no cars around versus when there are cars around. So it's a lot more careful. The turn is a lot more wider. And just like that, you'll notice that it does a perfect parking once again. And this can be super useful if you struggle with parking in public spaces. All right, so those are all the features that you unlock with the full self-driving package, whether you pay for it monthly or you just pay for it all up front. I will say it's really nice that they're letting you pay monthly because if you're leasing this vehicle, then you can pay month by month. It doesn't make sense for you to pay 12 grand to fully unlock something that you're not gonna have forever for a car that you're planning to get back. Now. 
are these features worth it? I think that the automatic driving is super cool. I think the self parking is awesome. Um, there is that summon feature that we did not show in this video because um, there's some legal restrictions around it in Canada and honestly, I don't really trust it based on all the horror stories that I've seen. I have some friends who have personally used it. Their car ended up crashing in the parking lot into another car and then it was just a whole mess. So I don't even want to get into that. It's not worth it just to make a video. So we only tested out the full self driving and the automatic parking and I felt comfortable doing that because I'm in control and I can take over at any point if I feel like the car is going to mess up even though I don't think it is. I have full confidence in the full self driving package. Now all of that being said, I personally would not pay $100 a month or $12,000 in total to unlock full self driving for a car I already own. And that's just because honestly it kind of annoys me that those features are not already included in a car that I purchased and that I own and that I have to pay more money to unlock features behind it. But putting my annoyance aside, it doesn't really make sense in my opinion personally to pay more money to have your car drive you when you can just drive yourself and you have to sit in the pat in the driver's seat anyways maybe if it gets to a point where i can send the passenger seat and i can be completely hands-free and i don't have to touch the car at all and it completely drives itself without any human assistance then maybe i could see it being worth it if you're tired or maybe you're going on a long road trip and you need to sleep or something like that but obviously we're really far away from that so personally right now even in 2024 i don't think the full self-driving is worth the money and you should probably just keep it and drive yourself but yeah thanks for watching this video that's it for the full self-driving on the tesla model y in 2024 hope you learned something hope you enjoyed the video i'll catch you guys in the next one and until then keep creating